This yes, uh, the super chat. Apparently, we missed it. Valiant has stepped aside. Uh, we got to know. What do you think? Does the movement of the Ray production to August signal that Kathleen Kennedy might stick around? Is there any way in this world that Disney can keep Kathy, even despite what we've watched across the news media over the past week, which yeah. is uh, requiring desperate attempts to save her? You, you know, I have been wrong so many times on Kathleen Kennedy. The only thing I, I believe that I will be correct when it comes to Kathleen Kennedy is that when she goes, I think they're going to make a production of it. I, I used to think that they're going to make it where she's just going to quietly exit and we'll just never hear from her again. But I don't think her ego and her prestige in the Hollywood red carpet cult will allow that. I think they want to do one of these lifetime awards, oh, yeah. big thing, and I think they just want to like pull out all the parade and just get her the hell out of there. I mean, I'm sure she has her her supporters, but uh, I just don't. I think Kathleen Kennedy is going to go when Kathleen Kennedy wants to go, or unless Iger gets a set of balls. Yeah, that's the problem. And somebody had asked earlier. Well, Culture Waste, uh, his first <coughs> his first chat was on this, um, asking about you know this would be the year in theory, twenty twenty four, that her contract would once again come up for renewal, right? It does uh, in so October. The, yeah, October. So in twenty twenty one was her last renewal. Uh, that was in the midst of of obviously everything that was going on. It was uh, you know Eternals. When uh, did Eternals, or was that right after? Uh, it was well. It was around the same time that movie came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I just think she has a lot of egg on her face. I mean, it is beyond me. In any other industry, you didn't like yeah. Willow. You didn't <laughs> Willow. like Willow. I tore Willow to shreds. You know what the major problem was with Willow? We actually talked about that for a few minutes on the stream early on my first live stream. Is the fact that Willow, I think, was the first major indication that everyday normies could see that there was something wrong. I mean, they lifted entire plot points pure scenes from young guns from aliens from star wars they just lifted them and just changed the names well, to match the willow characters I, I appreciate that you gave more airtime to willow today than disney did. that's very kind of you. <laughs> yeah it's just uh, uh, what yeah. do you think valiant do you think that uh i mean you know what we all would love we'd love to see her be hauled out and push through the front door and go, don't let it hit you where the good Lord split you. But I just don't think that's ever going to happen. I, I, I've been, I'll tell you, the one thing that I've been very consistent on since my early days on YouTube is that, is Kathleen Kennedy ever going to get fired? No. She's no. never going to be humiliated, never going to be embarrassed, never going to be frog marched out. The only thing that we've ever looked at is each and every time her contract comes up for renewal, right? Okay. Would she be renewed? Because no matter how she exits Disney, it was always going to be graceful. In fact, for the last couple of two or three years, and Pro has said the same thing. Uh, you know, I was uh, early on. I mean, I remember having the conversation with Echo Base Network probably two, almost three years ago now, saying, "No, I mean, she's she's going to be retired in grand fashion, as you just said." Uh, yeah. you, you remember she, the Temple of Doom opening number? Anything goes. Yeah. That's going to be at the award shows. They're going to haul her out in, uh, in a and wheelchair or whatever it takes yeah, when she's yeah. 90. <laughs> yep. She was in that scene. So. What worries me What worries me about the Ray movie mm-hmm. is, is that I can see two possibilities. Either she, you know, she anoints, you know, Obadoy. I can't ever pronounce her name. Then the new Star Wars yeah, director. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy. Yeah. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy. I don't know. I just, after watching that video, it's like I tried to delete her name. Uh, so either she's going to anoint her or anoint a successor or the worst fears is she's going to continue. But I think the, the structural damage that she's caused to Disney, even if she were to leave tomorrow, mm-hmm. I think that's going to be around. Her presence will be around in one form, fashion or another. I mean, don't remember. Let's not forget the, the Spielberg snub. Yeah. I mean, that does add a little bit of. A little bit of counterweight. Okay. Mm-hmm you know, to her, you know, I mean, that, that was huge. That really, rever- in other words, even I heard about it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That but you really know, reverberated. So I don't know. I, I hope. I, I, probably I, pray. Right. I pray. No, I, I think they would gain a whole section of fandom back if they actually trounced her butt. That's, so, that's so- probably true. I just don't know. Here's the thing. I mean, she's going to be 71 years old this year. Right. Um, you know, at some point you got to look at it and go, okay, she's going to be 71 or I think she's turning 71 or maybe she's turning 72. I can't remember this year. So that means by the time her contract comes up, I mean, she's, 
at least 71. How long do you stick around? How long, you know, how much does she really have to do with anything? How much anymore? wrath does she still have in the tank? Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, she, she sold, uh, one of her homes, um, last year, uh, that was around Disney because she's from Northern California. Lucasfilm itself is in San Francisco. It's not, you know, there's, and there's nothing, there's nothing at Lucasfilm but a corporate office, basically. Of course, you got Skywalker Ranch and ILM and all that's out there. But as far as like a mate, there's, they don't have a big sound stage or anything sitting over there, to my knowledge. Everything is done down in Burbank around Disney. So, I mean, does she stay? Does she go? Like one of the things that we've talked about from, again, early days I've been on YouTube was, her leaving in and of itself is not going to fix Star Wars. Right. Right. No. It's a big first step in the right direction for sure. But it all depends on what do they replace her with? So if, if she retires and they say, well, Carrie Beck and Dave Filoni are in charge, especially Yay. Carrie Beck, is that going to get any better? Or space whales. Gorgeous. No. Gorgeous it, in the, in the, in the I mean, in, in if the it was Dave I, Filoni from the Clone Wars era, whatever happened to him, and he got mind wiped or woke mind virus. Well, all, all the all the women came in and took over Lucasfilm, and then he became part of that clique. Uh, yeah, by, he, got I mean, little, he got an estrogen shot or something. Dave, like, yeah. I'll give you guys the brand. Two. These brands are irretrievably ruined. It, 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 they're not the future in any. It, it, there's no. There's no resurrection there's no there's no there's no fix available there's there's two reasons that i don't think kathleen kennedy has been fired yet or let go or sent packing in a ceremonious celebration of some sort mm -hmm. and it, it, uh, this is my video tomorrow afternoon but i'll go ahead and say these two things and folks i know you'll all still watch the video because you love it point one they can't get rid of kathleen kennedy because there's nobody to replace her that's it. whoever would want to take that job why? You'd be stepping into a slime pit over there at Lucasfilm. It's the most venomous, vitriolic places in Hollywood, and that's really saying something. And then the second reason they haven't gotten rid of, of her <laughs> right now is because if, <laughs> if you do, yeah, she's the epitome of it. If you do get rid of her, then you spook the investors even more at a time that you're at a proxy fight with Nelson Peltz. Because you're saying, hey, we had to drop the head of one of our major four uh, uh, divisions of entertainment production. And so that's got, you know, that's an issue. So that there's your two big reasons. But the number one is the bigger. Well, the, the big thing is they could push the issue towards, like we said, October, right? Because that's a natural contractual oh. end for her. Yeah. If they don't, if they renew it or if they don't renew it. So they could, if, I mean, again, it's like you said, if Bob Iger grows a pair of balls, um, you know, they could at that point, they could be setting it up now to where they would say, look, Kathleen, this is. This has got to be it, uh, you know, and, and her age and everything else. And I'm not insulting her age, but no. I'm saying when you have an executive who is 71 years old, retirement is a perfectly normal, natural, publicly acceptable thing. I mean, she's going to get EPs forever. She'll yeah. have EP credits forever. Out of everything that Star Wars, everything that's produced under the Disney Star Wars banner from now for the next 10 years, at least after she retires, will have Kathleen Kennedy, executive producer. Just like George Lucas still has EP credits. People ask, well, is Lucas still making money on Star Wars? Well, yes. not really, but yes and no. Yeah, no, I was going to say, not from the purchase. Disney is not still paying. Like people would ask me, is he still getting rights checks? No, not really. The only thing he's getting is every time his name gets up there as producer George Lucas, because it was his property, because of Producers Guild rules in Hollywood, he's getting a paycheck to some degree or another for that project. But as far as Lucasfilm and Disney paying him, you know, long term licensing rights and fees, no, that's not happening. Um, but Kennedy is going to get the same kind of deal. Uh, you know, maybe not as much as George gets. Who knows? But I just hate they pay him in Rose Tico dolls. Those things. Are <laughs> oh, value. yeah, it's terrible. But Pro let me ask you a question, though, all of y'all, because what what Pro just said it sparked a thought, and and because you're saying, let's say Kennedy's gone, she's going to go at some point. Sure. Okay, so she's gone, and no one wants to take over the position. What if they offer? Do you think they would offer someone? Look, please come save this. We paid four billion dollars. It's in the toilet. But they have to give them full control to clean it all out and to restart. Mm -hmm. Will they not do that? If Here's what I think they would charge? do. They would have to bring in some. If you did it the right way, mm -hmm. then you've got you've got to treat this like Twitter. You've right. got to bring in somebody who knocks out two thirds of the of the staff there. Yep. And simultaneous, you have to hire out future productions to other companies, a la what Netflix does with the Duffer Brothers and that sort of thing. 
and then until, leave them alone. <laughs> until you know, for like five years until you can get that house cleaned up over at Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. and you save you save the production side of it. So uh, help me out, Valiant. What's the uh, shoot? I can't think of the name right now. Not what the one valuable part of Lucasfilm that's still left. ILM. ILM, thank you. you yeah. You do oh, everything well, I, you can to ILM save ILM. Are fine. The ILM yeah. people, all the ILM people are fine. So and you got a, to, yeah, you got a lot of people that have been there for a while, like Doug Chang, who's a creative director, but he does all the artwork. Like he's been. Every Pearl, time, the only way that happens mm-hmm. is if the is that is if the acquiring company is overseas. Why? Be, be, wait, wait, because wait, wait. the acquiring American company, American corporate culture, won't oh, oh, I see what you're saying. happen. Well, that's you don't think you don't think that's changing? It's like I read a report in the Wall Street Journal. What was it? Three weeks ago that they were saying that even Google, they were talking about companies like Google have now dropped anywhere from thirty percent to eighty percent of their whole DEI consultancies departments. Right. But but what but what but what we're talking about here would be not merely a quiet backing off. Okay. But a what's it called a um. Like a hostile, it, it would it would be what, what's 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 the word when when you when you when you uh, reject something uh, a statement of rejection. Oh, and I they would, it, it it would be a, a repudiation. A yeah, a repudiation of what there was such, idea. such an obvious mm-hmm. repudiation of what. And again, you know, George, in, in previous conversations, I, I have one of, one of my little hypotheses here is that Disney's. One of the reasons Disney has become what it has become mm-hmm. is that it is so deep. The culture there is, is so deeply affected. And I, I have a my thinking is that this works on the park side because of the kind of people who are attracted to work at the parks and the whole Orlando scene and what's been going on there really for decades. And, you know, this sense of invincibility that Disney has. It just would have to be. I mean, it's 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 such an entertaining idea, pro. This idea of like doing, we're gonna we're gonna take this, we're really gonna like take it private. All right. Well, well, let me let me say, I was asked, how would you do it? Not will they do it? Like right. if you tried to thread the needle, that's the best you could do. It's not what they will do. We we've, we've watched what they'll do. They'll fill. They'll fill the roster of a basketball team with ballerinas and see if they can win the championship. <laughs> but it can only last so long. Even Disney. I mean, how long? You're, these people have egos. I mean, how long can they take being humiliated, even though they're being worshipped by their own people? No, George, it's you. You're the uncomfortable one. Don't you remember? The Cotto DDS for $20. Uh, came in late, so this may have been addressed, but is it a prevailing theory that by KK starting Ray? this year that she will get an extension on her contract because this movie is in progress. <clears throat> we were talking about that. You probably caught the conversation earlier. Specifically to that, and Pro chime in on this one as well, but um, that was a Bob Iger initiative. This new Star Wars movie going back to theaters uh, featuring Ray and bringing in Grogu and and uh, Chewie and R2 and and some other Mandalorian character, maybe one we've already, might be Sabine, who knows, they need more chicks in there. Um, that's a Bob Iger initiative. So it's, it, theoretically, whether KK is around or not running Lucasfilm, this was pushed from above KK. So right, that's why we've always been at least semi-confident that this would come out. I mean, never, never uh, discount the ability of Lucasfilm to seize failure out of the jaws of victory. But at right. the same time, this uh, appears to have come from above, from beyond Kathleen Kennedy. Although I think Lucasfilm was exceedingly happy to get the orders provided. And for folks out there right. who might suspect that we're wrong about this, I would just say, go look at the timeline. Daisy Ridley shows up at Lucasfilm within two weeks of Bob Iger being back in the C-suite. Yep. Uh, not just with his shower, but rather with his power. Like visiting. Up in San Francisco, visiting Lucasfilm, visiting with Kennedy, going to lunch with her, uh, you know, and then then we heard what was going on and and everything kind of fit together. And, you know, Pro had his sources that suggested that this was on the way. And sure enough, a couple of months later, we got Star Wars Celebration and we could not have got a bigger confirmation than what we saw. Obeyed Shinoi walks out, says, here's a new movie. I'm directing it. Guess who it's starring? Daisy Ridley walks out on stage. 
And we, you know, it I took right. a big risk on that one too. You know? Yeah, you did. Uh, and, and that would have been major egg in the face if we had uh, said all that and got it wrong. You were 10,000% on the money. Everything was correct. No, no, it's true. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, and, it, you know, you, you, you've nailed a lot of things down very correctly that have been measurable. That's that's the big thing is having measurable success on that. And um, so, yeah, I don't I don't see this because of that, because of the Iger situation, because this is something he's pushing down from the top. The likelihood that this is just going to become another thing where, you know, it's another project that starts and stops because of Kennedy. It's not a Kennedy project. Really, it's an Iger project, and that's the big difference. Um, so, and again, like we talked about when this came out, Staccato, is that what makes this different is this is something that's been sticking in Bob Iger's craw. This is a very obvious black eye for him. The media, the financial media and the wall in the uh, the Wall Street media and the Hollywood media, they haven't talked for years about how what's going on with Marvel. Why is there nothing from Marvel? Now, Marvel, the last couple of years has sucked. But they're putting out product. But they have for years been talking about what happened to Star Wars. Star Wars was mismanaged. Star Wars was a mess. Star Wars hasn't made anything new. Iger don't like that. Remember, he was he was championed for bringing this in. He does not like his ego being damaged. So this movie, he's going to get something out in the theaters come hell or high water. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what turns out. And I think it's mostly going to be a dog turd. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.